everyone. Welcome to Meet the Voice. I'm audiobook producer Nithya Rajendran, and we are with Tanis Peronto. Hi, Tanis. Hi. So Tanis and I actually know each other from a, a previous job over at the Screen Actors Guild Foundation, and it's awesome to be working with her now um, in, in audiobooks. So this is such a treat. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So I know a little bit about you since we've worked together before, but uh, give me a little bit about your background. How did you get started in acting? And particularly, how did you get started in audiobooks? I am um, originally from Canada, from a very small town up in northwestern Alberta called Peace River. I am uh, also a member of the Métis Nation of Alberta from Region 6, which is the Peace River area. I'm Cree. Um, Born and raised there, started my undergrad as a bachelor of physical education um, degree track and um, finished that, but also that is when I got bit by the acting bug yeah. because I had one option, one elective to fill outside my faculty and I came across Drama 101 and thought, well, this looks fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was the end of that. So that yeah, the beginning of the end really. <laughs> um, yeah. So I finished my degree and then I started acting. In all the books you've done, is there a book that particularly stays with you or a character or a person that you still, you know, just just are still uh, influenced by or affected by? Um, yeah, it's a, and a book I recommend a lot to people um, because I do, as a native actor, a native narrator, I get asked, like, are there books that I should read by native authors? And um, The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee by yes. David Troyer is one that I recommend all the time because um, in school, for the most part, kids are only taught that native people exist up until like the 1850s or the late 1800s and then it stops. <laughs> like K through 12, there's like no, and that's why people, right. like kids don't know Indians still exist. Mm -hmm. um, or a, a lot of, uh, and outside of that, um, there are many adults who just know up to like wounded knee and that's it. Right. But there's a whole, like we're, we're still here today, you know, and we've done many things like in the last 50 years. Um, so David has written basically, like he, there's history in that book beyond wounded knee, but there's also like the past 50 years as well, which is mm -hmm. super important. And I think really it's such an enriching read because um, he spans, he covers so many different nations. So that's one I, I recommend all the time. I narrate a lot of books by native authors, um, mm -hmm. which I'm really grateful for. And it's been such a, such a blessing and such a, um, such a treat to be able to do. And I've um, luckily, knock on wood, have enjoyed every single book that I've narrated. So let's keep that going. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, but I've read all different kinds of fiction and nonfiction by Native authors, and I feel like there's just sort of a like a inherent spirituality that is there within me that is also within that I connect that something in the book that I connect to just being Native. Mm -hmm. Many of the stories that are told are universal across many different nations, and so um, my own included, and so. And touches on very, and they all touch on very various different issues and many different native issues. And so, it's yeah. It, there's, it's not that I like ch I work on something and choose to bring it in, but there's just like a connection that happens. And sometimes it's overwhelming actually because mm -hmm. you're sort of touching on intergenerational trauma um, mm. in. And not necessarily in overtly heavy ways, but just because it's like in my DNA, I feel like, you know, emotions come up. Sure. Um, and I take my moment and everyone that I work with has been really supportive because sometimes it's hard to read, you know, rehash those things um, that have yeah. happened in the past. And uh, yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> but, <laughs> I know, totally, um, yeah. But it's also, I feel like for me, it's like a spiritual experience in a way too because I'm, I'm connecting uh, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm connecting with my ancestors that way. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's yeah. great. And, you know, that's a, it's a fantastic medium, uh, in which to, to do that. Yeah. So it's really incredible. Um, that's very cool. Are there uh, particular types of books that you enjoy reading, um, as far as fiction or nonfiction, any genres that really get you going? I'm really enjoying nonfiction right now. Okay. Um, I do enjoy reading fiction, but I feel like it is harder. Oh. 
<laughs> because Fair. of the voices. And voices don't come naturally to me. Um, mm-hmm. and they're not like super easy for me to do a bunch of different voices. And so mm-hmm. I have my way of doing voices. Like I, they don't all sound completely different like some amazing narrators can do. Mm-hmm. I'll just either... You know, go a little bit higher, a little bit lower, make it more gravelly, make it mm-hmm. like play with the pace or the, um, yeah, like the tempo um, and just sort of take on like different postures and physicalities mm-hmm. in yeah. order for the voice to hopefully sound different. So that's my way of doing it and it's apparently working. I don't know. But, <laughs> but yeah, it just, it takes yeah. so much more out of you because you're constantly, sure. you know, changing your voice a lot. So I do enjoy it, but... Mm-hmm. It, sometimes it's a little daunting, but then I get into it and I'm like, oh, okay, I can do this. You got it. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. So, Tamis, outside of audiobooks, what what other uh, acting roles or what other projects are you involved in? Tell us a little bit about, you know, your outside audiobook narrating life. So I work for a theater company called Alter Theater. Um, they're mm-hmm. based in San Rafael in Northern California. Okay. And they have a... Um, an arts learning project for Native youth. So they do virtual workshops and in person uh, for Native youth. The target is to target Native youth on reservations who have less access to maybe um, Natives that are in urban areas. Mm-hmm. But the the program is expanded, so we'll, we'll try to go everywhere we can. But I am the tribal liaison um, outreach mm-hmm. coordinator for that. So that's been really great working with them. And um, it's kind of expanding into like, Things like keeping on building the native roster that I've kind of been doing mm. already on my own. So um, they're supporting me in that, which is great um, because we're trying to, besides, you know, because I get hit up all the time like for a native director <laughs> or mm. like um, singers or consultants or, mm. you know, and casting directors hit me up all the time for stuff like that too. And so um, we're trying to, what I want to do is there's those you know, the, the main kind of jobs in the industry that you know about and that um, the youth know about, but there's also, you know, stage managing and mm. company managing and um, all these different crew positions that you might not think right. of. And so um, we want to also gauge interest and, and educate and let them know, like, there's more than just performing and directing and writing. So you might already have skill sets that you yeah. can transfer over to something else that could also support your writing, you know. Right. Um, so for me, for example, also I'm working in casting now because um, mm-hmm. I, I was doing some casting consulting, but now I'm actually an assistant casting director with TBD Casting Co. with Stephanie Yanquit okay. here in New York, and that's been fantastic also. So eye-opening as an actor to work on the other yeah. side of that too. So. Wow. <laughs> that is a lot. Yeah, Tim- but it's Tim- great. Tim- I love wow. it. <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, it's so awesome to see uh, all your passions being funneled into so many different mm-hmm. uh, places uh, creatively as well as, you know, supporting the Native community and young people uh, it, all around. Just, yeah. that's that is impressive. Yeah. My mission is to uplift and support contemporary indigenous voices and stories and to like I said be part of that like pathway pipeline to like bring other native creatives Mm -hmm. forward oh that's incredible and I'm you know the native community is so lucky to have such a a leader in this creative field like yourself so that's that's amazing that you're doing all this on on that note for somebody who's watching who's native who uh, is interested in getting into acting, no matter what age they might be, or whether it's audiobooks or otherwise. Do you have a, you know, sort of advice as to how to break in, uh, what they can do to uh, launch their their careers? Having a place where we can find you on the internet, where people uh, can find you, because mm-hmm. working in casting now, I've been looking for very specific roles to fill, very specific mm-hmm. types, and when you find those rare gems. And you want to find out more about them or more of their work or find out even how to contact them. Sometimes there's right. they don't have anything listed. And, and something as simple as like on Instagram, if you don't have a website, that's fine. You can upload your reels or whatever kind of work you want to showcase on Instagram or on your Facebook. Yeah. You don't have or but definitely actors access like have a free profile so casting directors can find you. Yeah. 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 One of my one of my colleagues uh, discovered somebody who she wanted to narrate this book, 
and had a really difficult time. So she had to kind of slide into her Insta DMs mm -hmm. to, to get her info yep. and yep. just be like, I, I you know, want to hire you. But yeah, we've done that too. We've done that. Yeah. Yep. And but then that's it. That's could be you could get to them, but you possibly couldn't either because if you don't, mm -hmm. if they don't follow you, you don't follow them. They might not see that little right. request tab on Instagram. Exactly. So if you don't have like an email way, yeah. yeah. So be findable. <laughs> be findable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. From a producer's perspective, yeah. absolutely. Please, so we, can we want to contact. You. Yeah, we want to contact <laughs> you. We like you, Tannis. Thank you so much for joining us for Meet the Voice. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you and talking to you, and yeah, just getting to know you as a narrator and an actor. And uh, thanks for taking the time to do this. Thank you so much for having me. It was really great. I enjoyed it a lot. Awesome. Me too.